today to talk about the wonderful movie, Shirley. Um, we have a, a stacked set of panelists today um, to talk about the film. Uh, we're gonna bring them on. Um, we have Josephine Decker who directed the film um, and stars Odessa Young, Elizabeth Moss and Michael Stuhlbarg. Um, the way this is gonna work is I'm going to ask them some questions and they're gonna talk about the film a little bit. And then you can drop some um, questions in the comments and some of them will get fed to me. So your question may make it into this discussion as well. Um, I'm really, really excited to talk to all of you about this. Uh, I love this film. I've loved it since I saw it in January at Sundance and I was so happy that it was making its way into the world. Um, partly because I love Shirley Jackson, but also because I think it's an interesting film for introducing us to a way of, of kind of thinking about her writing and the way that she told stories as well. Um, but I do think, you know, once I've been talking to people about the film, one of the questions they often have is about the relationship between Shirley and Stanley, which are your characters, Elizabeth and Michael. And I was wondering if you could kind of start out with the two of you talking about how you thought about the relationship between these two characters in the film, because I think it's a complicated one and a complex one and a layered one. So how did you approach that and what, what is their relationship? I want to hear from Michael because I, I, <laughs> I've been talking. I want to hear from Michael. Uh, Hi, Odessa and Michael. Hi. I haven't seen that. Uh, in a I know. <laughs> <laughs> what should we say? Um, you know, uh, there's the historic people who we learned about, you know, digging around on the internet, reading books and interviewing people. And there's the sort of, uh, you know, the nuggets of things that come from that kind of research. Mm -hmm. And then there's the novel that it's based on, but primarily it's the script that we have that we're given. And then we show up and we meet each other and we talk about things and we ask questions and we get answers. But really one of the, the nuggets of this experience for me was just as Elizabeth has said before was being in front of each other and finally making the decision, knowing as much as we did to just interact and trust that work, let it go and allow it to be you know, two times removed from the truth somewhat. So we had some freedom to uh, do what we felt like we needed to, depending upon the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly right. We just kind of looked at each other right before we started, we'd done all the work and we'd done all the good actor stuff and tried to be good soldiers. And then we were like, okay, here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think one question people have about the two of them in particular is they're both writers. They're both very ambitious people. They have a complicated relationship. Um, do you, you know, as you're kind of getting inside of them, do you feel like they hate each other? Or do they love each other? Is it both? Is it something else? How do, how is that kind of creative partnership, which I think we've seen on film before, um, how is it different in this film? Oh, I mean, I don't know how it's different, but I, I do know that from what we learned about them, which we really tried to stay uh, true to in the film is, is that they they loved each other very much and they're um they had a lot of respect and admiration for each other as well and as you know you know that from the end of the film you know stanley's opinion of shirley's work was the, the only one that really mattered to her um she had that much respect for him um as a writer and so you know i think they had you know times that people have in marriages uh, of course, and they had an unusual modern sort of marriage, but, um, and they were very challenged by each other at times and challenged by their own kind of writing processes. But I think at the same time, I mean, I hope this comes across, we decided in, in from our research, you know, that they were very passionate about each other. They had these letters that we would read to each other, from, that they wrote to each other, especially from early in their relationship. And they were funny and, like kind of sassy and and you know had nicknames for each other and they were um very attracted to each other and uh i think i hope that that's there in the movie because that's what we kind of thought of it as i agree i know that yeah go ahead no please go ahead 
Well, I was going to say, I was just going to throw in that I know that this is a fictionalized version of Shirley, but I know the real Shirley used to draw cartoons of Stanley in the corners of books and letters, <laughs> and they're, they're very funny. They had a very interesting relationship that way. They were um, very funny people. They're, they had, you know, we've, we've talked to hit, oh, that's just me. I don't want to update my iPad, Apple. Um, they, uh, <laughs> they, they, we've talked to Lawrence, uh, um, her, her son a bit. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he talks about how funny they both were. They've, and they had the best senses of, of humor as well. Um, anyway, go ahead. You've clearly done your research, Alyssa. <laughs> Well, no, I, I just think that that's like, that really comes through and it's great in the film. I'm, I'm now really curious how um, Odessa, you approach this character who is, you know, wholly fictional, but obviously has this really interesting relationship with Shirley. Um, how did you two, you know, how does your character think about her um, and how does she develop as the film goes on? Mm. Um. I mean, yeah, it was, it was obviously kind of came in from a very different uh, entry point as as Eddie and Michael, because there was, you know, it was very clear from the start that Rose was a fictitious character and that, you know, also because the the script that we were working from that Sarah Govins wrote has, had taken its own step away from the fictitious book that was written about these characters. So it was kind of just like a, you know, fiction funneled through the what ifs of reality. And um, I think just, you know, think, thinking about how, I, I think I think the way that I got into Rose was just kind of really any, any kind of um, dramatic experiment that you do in your own mind of like, what would happen if, if, a, if a young woman or if a young couple um, entered the lives of people who were simultaneously uh, so enlivening to them, but also so terrifying, um, and really just kind of figuring out what I needed to do as an actor and also what Rose needed to be as a character within the confines of the script to, to kind of just fit into this dynamic that was, that was happening so perfectly and organically in front of me. And it, and it was just really, you know, I, I feel like I had an easy job <laughs> because I got to go to work with Michael and Lizzie and you like, you know, my Rose, is, Rose for the, for the most part, at least in the kind of uh, first, first act of the movie is, is very much in awe of this dynamic that she sees of these people, these like, you know, people who are unafraid to speak their minds or to bring up the very awkward elephant in the room perhaps. And it's, I, I doubt that it was ever a situation that Rose had been in before. And so really just that kind of, you know, be, being able to just sit back and watch, I think lent a lot of <laughs> reality to <laughs> my performance, just being able to <laughs> just have in front of me. Yeah, she's also reading the lottery uh, right on the way mm. into this kind of story. It's the first thing we see. And mm. I, that struck me as funny because I think a lot of people read the lottery in high school or junior high or whatever, but it is kind of a story about a little society that's trying to figure out, who, you know, who's gonna die. <laughs> and yeah. so going into the film, you already feel this danger, right? Well, yeah, I think I think so. And I and I also I likewise remembered reading the lottery in, in high school. And, you know, I, I think that what Rose feels from reading that is that kind of, you know, you get excited about meeting someone who has such a kind of um, who, who is, is so prolific or is so kind of uh, almost notorious. And then and then you realize, you know, it's that kind of like, don't, don't, don't meet your idols or like, don't Google <laughs> your idols too much, I think is the new version of that. Um, but, but also, yeah, that kind of like reality that uh, a, a person such as Shirley Jackson, who is writing such fiction at the time, you know, and these, these ideas kind of coming out of her mind, that that mind could only be just like a little a little off kilter maybe. And I think that the reality of that kind of sinks in in the, in the first meeting of them, which is just so perfectly unsettling, Lizzie. You did that so well. <laughs> Aww, thank you. I haven't, <laughs> we haven't seen Odessa in so long. So I'm literally, I'm just like, hi. It's so nice to see you guys again. <laughs> I know. I know. We, couldn't, 
I got stuck in Canada when I was meant to uh, come come to Sundance when we were premiering there, and and so I was I had to miss all of the. It's so good to see you guys. Oh, it's so good to see you too. It's, it's really been since like it's been since we shot the movie, has yeah, it? it? Has I think yeah, you're right. Which is 2018. Oh my I gosh, God. yeah, a different world entirely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. Well, Josephine, I wanted to bring you in and ask you a little bit about, um, you and I talked about the film a few weeks ago, and one thing we talked about was how um, the kind of mysterious nature of um, Shirley Jackson's writing matches really well with what you feel when you make a movie that you actually kind of like it if people feel a little confused by what they just saw. <laughs> um, <laughs> In, in that they keep thinking about it, right? So can you talk a little bit about that and how you approach her story that way? Well, you know, so many of Shirley's stories, her Shirley Jackson's real stories, and, you know, they take you on a journey that starts in, I mean, they're always a little bit liquid. You know, there's a sense of that, you know, what's happening, that you're in a reality. And then at some point, there's kind of a switch that happens and you realize and it's hard to pinpoint the moment. And I think that's what's one of the things that's brilliant about her. You, you realize that you're inside of someone's mind and that, um, that your main character's mind. And so that I loved that way that she has, and it's not every story is like that, but many, like uh, many of her novels and then um, some of her like seminal short stories like kind of end that way. And so we really wanted to feel, I really wanted to feel that, you know, progression that you kind of move from this objective experience to a subjective one. And obviously throughout the movie, you're going in and out of Shirley's mind. Um, but uh, I was, it was just exciting. The end of Sarah's script, May, you know was maybe not like wildly ambiguous but I was like mm, like there's a chance here that you could shoot the way that you shoot these final scenes it could feel like you don't know if Rose was ever even there you know and um that and I just got excited about and it, that's just framing that's just choosing the right frame and then obviously when we got into the edit and we started working with those scenes it felt like it just there was another opportunity for the film to have sort of almost like th these three different endings and it, and it feels like because, because there was such a powerful performance, like literally there are three fucking amazing performances. There was like the end of Paula, there, which is so tragic and haunting. There's the end of Rose's story, which is like a combination of like bittersweet and fucking empowering. And then there's the end of Shirley's story, which is maybe too complex to even put into words what is going on. You know, I think Lizzie's face is there's a reason that that's the end of the movie you know it's this this picture says like a million words of how complex the end of that story is so it was exciting that we were able to I think give the movie actually like three endings slash interpretations too so um hmm. anyway that's uh one thought <laughs> but <laughs> mostly I just stayed up all night like trying to figure it out for like weeks so that's that was <laughs> yeah the other side <laughs> yeah because I think people people are kind of used to seeing a movie like this where they're like I'm gonna go learn about this person's life and this is just not that at all right it's like a I feel I thought of it as kind of like a fantasia on someone's life more than anything else when I saw it that's a nice yeah. way of, thinking, of putting it. Yeah, <laughs> very much. I know. And thank you to Sarah Govins, who I wish she could be here, a writer who is just a genius and, and really like gave us a gorgeous launch pad. I think it's, that script is the mm -hmm. reason that all of us are, are here. Mm -hmm. um, I have kind of a group question, which is I'm wondering what the set, what it was like to work on your set. Like what was this shooting process like for everybody? Because it feels like a really interesting place and a really interesting kind of setting to be in and so how did you all experience that especially because it was about a thousand years ago now right. in real time <laughs> Jos <laughs> Josephine knows the one the first thing that comes to mind when I talk about that set <laughs> what is it Joe the air condition the giant air it, conditioner that it was, was so hot best friend yes. <laughs> so hot we just like I do remember yeah walking into set sometimes and Josie just had like the big um like just hold, holding and hugging like the tube <laughs> shot out all of the cold air um, oh my god besides that once you get past that uh 
I mean, it was a very Fantasia is a great example, actually, because it was different every day. It was like whatever the, the, there were new challenges every day and new scenes every day. And um, we, we had wanted to rehearse more and we didn't get the chance. And so we ended up kind of working out a lot on set and trying to take that rehearsal time on set. We would be stuck in this house and then people would go outside while they were like setting up and get up, get some fresh air. And I would just, I would be standing out in the yard on one end and I would see Michael standing on the other end. And I'd just be like, hey, <laughs> you know, and Odessa would be like over there. Like it was just kind of, there was this, everyone had gone to their corners and then we'd come back into the house and, and, and dive in again. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of the picture that I get when I think about it. What about you guys? Odessa. I'd agree with that, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's just saying, go for it. Jump um, in. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think that the, and it's 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 so interesting, kind of, um, the first time I watched Shirley outside of like a rough cut very early on uh, was kind of in like the, in like month two or maybe the start of month three of, of quarantine. Um, or of, what are we calling it? I, isolation. <laughs> oh, isolation. <clears throat> and, and it really, it was interesting because I, I started getting these kind of sensory flashbacks of exactly what Lizzie's describing, like this very hot, <laughs> small roomed house that became, it was, it's so much part of the film. It, it should be, it should have a credit in, you know, in the mm -hmm. film, this, this character of the house and, um, and obviously also had to really like represent all of these these images and these symbols and Shirley's stories as well and um, reflect the kind of academia in which they lived and breathed and, you know, all of the kind of symbols around the house. And it just became such a character. And, and right, it did feel like we'd, we, you know, in between takes or setups, we would have to kind of get out and have a breather for, for our, you know, um, physical health as well as our mental health because we were getting heat stroke and stuff. Um, but, but, you know, similar, similarly, the house was also having its breather. Like it, the house was having a, having a cigarette break out the front as well. And, <laughs> and, and it, you know, I, uh, I do remember like those days of shooting in that house quite fondly because of that, because it just kind of, maybe elevated beyond like going to work and and actually became about kind of also that process of, of theater in which you're all just stuck in the same place doing the same thing no matter like you know I, I may have come into work with more, like one line that day but it would be all of us in there kind of experiencing the same thing and it felt it felt really beautiful it was really a miracle as well i i, I often wonder what the house looked like before we got there Mm -hmm. because all I knew was what it was when we showed up, which was it had been dressed to within, you know, a milla inch of its life. You know, the, the, the kitchen was dripping and the wallpaper was coming off and the stairs creaked and the yard looked a little scary and the trees were <laughs> everything. It was, there was an aspect of every aspect of the house that seemed to in one way or another resonate with Shirley and Stanley's family. I got to go to Bennington before we shot and took a look at their two old houses where they lived up there. And this house was kind of a child of those two houses. It had the ivy on the side, which you know had kind of that collegey feel to it. Um, it was a little ramshackle like their places were um, it really was the character that it sounds like it was, and we had to do very little. It was like just going in and you felt like you were in a different space. It was a wonderful, wonderful set that they were able to cobble together. Yeah. And it's for sale. I drove by there the other day. Is it really? Yeah. So if there are any, uh, you know, really devout <laughs> Shirley the <laughs> Shirley fans. <laughs> Josephine Decker fan. Go, go buy it up. 
That's um, amazing. Well, and I just want to add, you know, on it's we yeah. should say kudos to Sue Chan, our production designer. I love that you asked about process on set, and then we just ended up talking about the house. Like that's a that's like a, such a beautiful ode to her. And the one thing I wanted to add about process is just what a, what a blessing and a, like I just learned so much from each of these actors because they all have such different processes and and in ways that I learned so much from. I mean, I remember. Uh, like there was this one, one of my favorite stories to tell is that there was one of, I think the big dinner scene, the first dinner scene, which is like eight pages. And we had, we'd gotten to rehearse it like a little, we got into kind of rehearse it, but then we, you know, we never is enough time. Anyway, so we sl plopped down to do this eight page dinner scene and they're like, where do you want the potatoes and the chicken and the butter? And I'm like, I, on the table, like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, just put them on the table. And then <laughs> Michael was like, no, no, no the potatoes have to be here and then the, the chicken <laughs> is there and then the butter has to be all the way on the other side of the table and I I mean and I didn't know what was coming which was this dance that he had choreographed you know basically the dance around the table to you know with the with the final you know the tap of the butter life you know into the butter which is one of my favorite moments in the movie it's just so beautiful I mean obviously there's a million moments I love but I just and I really appreciated and respected like everyone came from their own magical place like this like Michael is such an amazing preparer and brings like magic to things that I you know the you don't have time to rehearse you know we didn't have time to and but he did that preparation on his own and then we have like Lizzie and Odessa coming into like the mushroom scene and there's just and you know and again we're just like running through the woods like landing on a weird mossy rock and then kind of like un I remember there was just a million mosquitoes and it's like so uncomfortable but then the camera rolls and they they both are just like I, I they just lock into the kind of mystery of another world and they lock into each other so beautifully and it's just like in this very spontaneous and organic way, they can just flip a switch and be in like sorcery. So I just feel like, wow, I just learned so much and got to, I mean, what, we had the best cast ever is really what I'm trying to say. <laughs> that was my experience of making the movie. <laughs> and writing. Um, we do have one question from the audience that I think is, um, has, has been something I've been wondering about, which is what what kind of brought you to the idea of um, having Odessa play both these characters, um, and you know what kind of was your take on what that meant or signified or 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 didn't? Well, it somehow felt really obvious when reading the script that that was and it wasn't it wasn't immediate, but I think it was pretty clear. I guess I realized that I had been visualizing the script as, with Paula as the same person as, as um, Rose, because I imagine mm -hmm. that's what Shirley was doing. You know, that she was, she's all of a sudden this kind of girl shows up in her mind when she's seeing this other girl and that it would, that she would have the same face and different mannerisms, different clothes, different way, but this, that it's this, this face inspires that one, you know? So mm -hmm. um, it felt really exciting and interesting and it also felt like what an exciting proposal to make to an actor and we're so lucky that Odessa just like inhabited it to the nth degree and really gave such different personas to each character so that I think you can really identify um when are you seeing Paula and just through her body language which is such a gift um so it felt yeah that that always felt like to me it was yeah I, once I realized that I had been visualizing it that way it was a really obvious choice hmm. I didn't know um, I was. I didn't know I was going to be playing Paula until the, like the morning. <laughs> Wait, no way, really? <laughs> yeah, no, I remember. It's just like, I guess because we talked about it a little bit, and I, I, I think that I just don't think it was confirmed. And I remember like <laughs> being, like having to do a wig fitting with um with our wonderful hair hairstylist, and and kind of it was like the, an hour before, and I was kind of going like. Why, why are we doing this? And so, <laughs> I, 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 I got, you know, I just got told to fit you with the wig because I guess you're playing Pola. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm playing Pola as well. Um, but yeah, that sounds I, about I think, right. That's, I yeah. feel like that's a, that was a very Shirley energy there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know, wonderful ideas in a, in the, the, you know, drop of a hat. Yeah. Um, but 
I also do think that it was kind of valuable to the themes of the movie itself. I remember hearing you say in an interview when I've been like spying on the press that's been going on without me. <laughs> um, I remember hearing Josie, you were saying in an interview that there are lots of themes in Shirley's books um, about, about two women kind of coming into contact with each other. And you can kind of read into that in, in Shirley, you know, whether it's Shirley and Rose or Rose and Paula kind of contrasted with each other as well. Kind of this, you know, the woman who is maybe has her shit together more. Oh, sorry. Am I allowed to swear? Sorry. <laughs> has her stuff together. <laughs> and, and like the woman who's kind of, you know, who can't manage to bring herself together. And I think that there's just such an interesting transference between the three women in this movie and where they sit in dynamic with each other. And, and, you know, I, I do, it, it was a gift to be able to play both of, both of those characters. Um, even if I didn't know that's what I was doing. Until I was there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think it lent a really interesting layer to it as well. So mm -hmm. you did it so beautifully. I mean, I can see it in your eyes and, you know, when you're Paula, it's, you just have, so, there's a, there's a glint, there's something else in your eyes that's sort of this, it's not the same glint that Rose has. It's just like a different kind of twinkle, right? Like it's- Yes, it's, it's pure perfect. panic. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever but works body, Awesome. Whatever works. Panic. Thank you. <laughs> well, we have hit our time limit, but um, this is a great discussion. I know we could go on for hours, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you all so much for doing this. Um, Shirley is available literally everywhere, digital platforms, Hulu, virtual cinemas, the whole nine yards. So um, watch it or rewatch it if you've already watched it and want to, to see it again. I All just right, want to shout you. out to Logan too, who's not here. Yeah. 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 Thanks <laughs> Logan, we love you. We love you Logan. Love you Logan. <laughs> thank you all for, uh, for joining us. <laughs>